Yes. José Luís. Bom, quando uh, quiser. Temos só tempos. Ok. Thanks all for coming and for coming for the second day of this international conference. The title of our talk is, you see, Diagram, Sound and Space. Um, let's start from the principle that sound is the result of a gesture, a movement and a energy, which can also be music. We started from an idea, the space for sound was part of the nature, how to make this nature a sound and music element, like time. And one hypothesis, only the technology that makes recording, reproduction and synthesis make the space be an element of the process of sound and music creation, which place the mental scheme outside in the work of art. You make three quotes from uh, Flusser, gesture, that explain the, the problem of the movement, the position, and the, the form why we listening music in another time and in this time, from Beethoven and from our Beethoven and Bach and uh, and our time now. The sound, the sound controlled or ordered at its beginnings in rhythm and in space. From here, music emerged. And music on to be hard, inventing old women's techniques, instruments, and a proper grammar, and a writing system. The sonic expression had always uh, occupied space, but sound was contaminated by the sprint, the qualities of the media, and the occupation of space. And this is a problem till uh, the, the time of pre-recording, of course. Words Harmony was one of the goals of those who had begun to develop visual representation in peculiar caverns, caverns not always inhabited. For that, women's artifacts were needed, controlled by their users, instruments emerged from here. It was the gesture and the rhythm that imposed new sonic landscape, a soundscape, to human community. But these instruments were not enough external to the body. To use them, they need to be domesticated by technique and by an endogenous energy, energy of the body, of course, of the interpreting and performing body. The mandatory question is how to go through from the hands-on and acoustic space, inserted in the grammatical space, in its proper writing system and in the interpreting space, to an absence of any writing system which could settle in a larger space. The hands were was in the device that first were mechanical, later electric, and after electronic. With them, it could be corrected steadily the laws of physics, like time and space, and we could then correct the temporal and historical linearity, even the translinear and corrupt the line. Deliberation of sound from space will only be possible if the intellect or the mind and the imagination could be transposed to at and out of the body. This action was only possible with the invention of the first sonic techniques of recording and reproduction. We have an example of uh, an image from a phonautograph of Scott Martinville. Sound became visible in the wax in the glass or in the paper, and its representation could be the beginning of the changing of the musical notation, you know that in the 20th century, the writing and the grammar. Technique will come to a lower synthesis, transforming what was an a priori into something simultaneous. It was thus possible to unit the parting from grammata, a diagram, what was always special and visual. The first experience emerged with the substantial modification of the music writing process. The problem is the process. From the Italian futurist, like Rossolo, Duchamp, Varese, and later John Cage, and going now to the new and electronic music. 
an example of uh, the 50 in the in the 20th century the, the imagine elements came for two radius the from john cage the notation is and the writing is different with the electrification of the device with the emergence of the computer and sonic art the materialities end up to be part of the process of musical writing and merging with the environment. Why can't to solve and set the problem? Because every phenomenon is as such because there is a mediation that lies within and subject in relation to the objects. Whatever there is, is a mediating process for Kant. So, uh, okay, let's, uh, I think that you understood uh, the basic uh, idea that was presented by Luis. It means that uh, it was not uh, a very, very new idea, but it's approached uh, as far as we, uh, we thought it. And uh, I must say, this is a, an he said as is on, that it is on process and will be on process for a, at least for a, a couple of months. It's to see uh, in every technical procedure uh, the, the, the fundamentals of uh, any uh, experience. So uh, the most uh, easy way to explain it is to quote uh, a very famous sentence from uh, uh, Wilhelm Flusser in the philosophy of photography, where he says that technical images or, or so to say uh, the images made by the photographies they are supposed to be maps but they turn out to be to to be screens so the term in german uh, was one stream it means uh, it, it comes to to be something that uh, 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 stop us or just get in between us so instead of representing the world says uh, flusser uh, they obscure it until human beings live finally to become a function of the image they create. This is was this was the an idea that uh, was born was developed from a, a French philosopher André Le Breton uh, from a book that uh, Alimage de l'homme, uh, where he states that all the, the the technical devices we create uh, then becomes our mirror. So we start seeing each other from uh, the point of view of the, uh, of the machines uh, we create. And so the, this is the, uh, the idea. And that uh, precise idea, uh, of course, uh, starts from Kant and from the idea of schematism. Uh, because for, for Kant, as uh, Luis uh, pointed out already, uh, everything that exists or everything that could be a phenomenon, uh, it's only a mediated process. It's always a mediated process. So that uh, form of mediation lies within the, the subjects and relates to objects. That's the, the reason why concepts need uh, an image uh, to fulfill uh, that what is the void inside the concept, because the concept is something very uh, abstract. So for Kant, we can just clear uh, realize that everything that it is is a mediated process or, or starts from uh, a mediated process. Can you? Yeah. Eleven. Yeah. So uh, this is uh, comes from uh, the account that uh, for Kant, schematism is not an image. Schematism is something completely different from uh, an image. It's, this is, was in the, transcendent, uh, the transcendentalism of uh, the schematism of uh, the pure reason. And the, the definition he's, he told us, uh, he, he wrote, is that schematism is our understanding with regard to appearance and their uh, form is the hidden art, an uh, ungeborene uh, Kunst, that lies in the depths of the human soul whose truths uh, operations we can def uh, divine from nature and lie unbelieved before the eyes only with difficulty. So even Kant, that uh, you know that the, the critic of pure reason, it was, was written for laymen. Uh, I don't know the conception of laymen that Kant had, but it's <laughs> for the, the, the nowadays laymen, critic of pure reason is not, uh, it's not uh, a reader's digest. But uh, 
a schema uh, basically just uh, try to be quick is something that uh, we can ever put forward and see what it is. It's something that it functions uh, uh, a hidden art. Uh, it's something that it functions that uh, without being aware of it. As for the case uh, in reading these uh, paragraphs of the critic of pure reason, going to the critic of uh, key, it's critic of urteilkraft, critic of judgment. Uh, we can see that uh, Kant and there is a clear connection uh, between these uh, subjects. I, I apologize because we will have more, more need more time to analyze and to do hermeneutics uh, exegesis uh, at least about uh, these uh, Kant concepts. Uh, concepts. Uh, he says that uh, art uh, is something that is. Uh, uh, a natural talent given by nature to the genius. So what makes arts, what is the rule of arts, what is the schema of arts? There are uh, authors that interpret uh, the notion of uh, schema uh, as the notion of, uh, or pre-notion of, uh, of art, of Kunst. Uh, and uh, so it's easy to conclude that uh, these uh, hidden mechanisms that make the schemata uh, this process that is uh, inside the individuals, it's imminent, uh, a true token of the things themselves. So it's not the image, but it's something that uh, goes or creates homogeneity to the things. It, it, it is in fact, uh, we can conclude that techniques becomes a form of making any relation into phenomenon. There is no such a thing uh, as a phenomenon without uh, sensibility, without perception, uh, so uh, the schema is not the perception, uh, the perception itself, it's the process that makes the perception, uh, the perception uh, as such or uh, the other one? Yeah. Uh, it makes the, uh, the perception or the knowledge uh, uh, be possible. So uh, if for Kant, uh, art imitates nat uh, nature. Uh, uh, this is only possible by a technique uh, that uh, cannot be shown, that can never be shown, so it belongs to the genius. So Kant resolves the problem uh, introducing the genius as the, the technical uh, person, so, or as the, the technician, or as the, the artist, the artist in the sense that Kunstler, that makes uh, something appear to us. So, and this is the case for, uh, for music. This is the case for music. Music is not a thing uh, in itself, and uh, but it's something that is made with propose it. And in the, in the, uh, in the preface uh, of the uh, critic of uh, judgment, he points out uh, this is uh, the sentence that is clear, uh, uh, make us clear to uh, uh, realize what we start departing from the notion of image in in, in Flusser. He says if this what if what is subjectivity propose is to be uh, objective as well, a much more far-reaching investigation is required not only for practical philosophy but also of the technique, whether is that the technique of nature or the technique of art. So he recognizes uh, a technique in nature and recognizes that a uh, technique in art. The, 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 what makes uh, art as such uh, is the, the genius and there is a technique of nature. So uh, that uh, brings us uh, an image or at least something, a content of our uh, uh, formal way uh, of thinking. And, and Kant ends up saying that, that is to say, to find, to find perfection in a, in a thing requires reason. To find a thing uh, agreeable only requires the senses. The encounter, uh, to encounter beauty is a thing requires nothing but reflection. So we can think uh, in ourselves upon a given representation. And what is the representation? Whatever it is, is it is genius or it is nature, uh, it's only uh, uh, invisible, but uh, it's only sensible uh, in a sense, or sh should be sensible uh, in the sense. So the next 
uh, this is all based in these facts for uh, for Kant. This is uh, the, the the paragraph of the schematismus uh, where he states that uh, there must be a, a third thing and treat us. So this uh, this it is my interpretation and Louis' interpretation that this uh, third element is technique, which must stand in homoge uh, homogeneity or uh, resemblance with the category of one uh, hand and the appearance of the other, and makes possible the unification of the former to the latter. The mediating representation must be intellectual on the one uh, side, but sensible on the other. This, this uh, mediating process, he called this the transcendental uh, schema. Uh, next. So, uh, 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 Kant is always uh, in this uh, chapter of the schematismus of the pure reason. Uh, he uh, was always trying to find uh, a unity uh, for it. And that unity is what, uh, uh, in the second edition of the critic of pure reason, uh, he calls the transcendental perception. So, and the transcendental, uh, transcendental perception means the I think. So, uh, if there is something uh, that w w we can state that exists, I must uh, find myself as uh, an object of perception of myself. That I, I'm not going to go deep into this because it's very difficult. Uh, or it's very difficult, it will take too long. Uh, transcendental perception is the, 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 the unity of the, the subject himself giving uh, content to himself. I am something. So she's, in, the, in this case, she's uh, running away or trying to solve the problem raised by, by Hume in the Treatise of Human Nature. But le let us take a, a definition of what is music from uh, Andrew Kania. Uh, and we, we see that uh, this, this process of creation tried to be uh, a, a, a definition of it. He says music is an event, in, uh, music is an event intentionally produced to be or organized, to be heard, or uh, third, either to have uh, some basic uh, musical feature such as speech, rhythm, or be to be listened for such uh, features. So it means that uh, music or uh, uh, sound uh, are something that is created by the humans. It doesn't exist per se. So it's something that uh, was made. And uh, our thesis is that uh, this is, uh, is the case uh, for the uh, um, uh, musical instruments, or for the musical devices, or for new uh, musical uh, interface or sound uh, interface. In this sense, uh, let's. Oh, you are already. Yeah. You are already in Kitler. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go to Kitler. So. Um, okay. The, uh, this is uh, a passage from the the well known uh, book uh, of Kitler. Uh, gramophone film typewriter, where he developed the, this this the, 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 this very same idea that uh, the objects we create will be the 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 objects will be mirrored uh, into. So of course here is Lacan, but I will avoid Lacan. And uh, if you you can read it, uh, so. Uh, I can't uh, go, so let's read it. Uh, Kant said, it's very, uh, Kitla said, uh, interpretation that I think of Kant, uh, the unity of everything that will, uh, in a sense, uh, will be uh, translated or will be, how can I say, uh, uh, transferred, if we want to use a more uh, Lacanian concept, to, to machines. Uh, and what he says, what is the the spirit, the what is this is my translation, which is not very good. What is cannot be uh, uh, object of a simulation uh, that is the center of the man is denied by its very definition. 
So in a sense, uh, we are in a in a point that uh, what he or some call uh, posthumanism uh, view. And then I will left these slides for the next slides for 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 uh, Louise. Uh, the idea is that uh, is, is to show that the, there is, uh, and I'm going to conclude. Uh, there is that uh, starting from the, the idea of the schema in uh, the scheme in Kant. Uh, that's the it is something. Uh, that do uh, or make the relation uh, between subjects and objects and creates the objects uh, itself that uh, that becomes uh, instruments where we can uh, in a sense uh, see them as uh, nature or nat natural processes but in fact they are uh, technical processes so Luis is now going to show some cases Okay, some cases uh, when the first from the Daphnorum and the uh, Heroramics, uh, and we see the, the, the change and the transfer of uh, our imagination in our mind for out of the body with a mechanism, a device. And uh, we, um, some of artists, use this idea out of the body and the synthesis to create some uh, objects like that the Tanjur Pike random access uh, with a diagram in the, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the work of art and the diagram is a reading uh, with an object, a device that uh, make some sound and make music and if you don't uh, um, listening to this uh, random access you need to, uh, to listen in uh, YouTube, for example. Okay. Just, uh, just one final word. Uh, uh, there is a leak here, or there is a hiatus here, uh, that we make on purpose. Uh, Charles and the Spurs is missing, so. <laughs> oh. uh, but it's it's missing purposely uh, for uh, only one reason, because. Uh, it will take long to explain the notion of diagram uh, in purse, and the notion of diagram in purse just came uh, directly uh, from uh, purse reading of Kant's schematismus. So, okay, you can point out that we failed to quote the notion of diagrams of purse, but that was made on purpose. Yeah, but we can next year with the full paper, okay? Okay, but it's different, the, the diagram in parts and the schematism in Kant and the, the, the diagram that we propose here for the uh, sonic art. And the schematism process with the aid of technique became a part of a special materiality that rebuilds outside the body a space with the sonic of within, which constitutes an improvement when related to Kant's transcendental schematism. The definition we will call this formal and pure condition of the sensibility to which the use of the concept of the understanding is restricted, the schema of this concept of the understanding. And we will call the procedure of the understanding will this schema of schematism of the pure understanding, is the definition of the critic of pure reason in Kant. The takeover of space becomes something primordial to leave place after for to flow in this determinate, determinant process, the use of new musical writing process, the recording and reproduction apparatus, and the synthesizer, and then all interfaces. We have a brief example of uh, a form or a, a pattern to see the schema with this, uh, with the, with this uh, illustration of Picasso by uh, the obra maestra desconhecida de Balzac, that uh, um, um, Picasso drew to the to this uh, to this edition, we see um, a woman, and we see the artist make some diagram that is the point of view of the human, and we have some reference that we need to uh, to point there. It's about the Vinicius Jonas that make uh, a PhD thesis about the diagram in pairs, but we are in another another way, from schema to diagram in the sonic heart, 
uh, Rocco Grange, Immanuel Kant, Fre uh, Friedrich Kittler, and Jakub Zebdik that have some uh, important uh, papers and books about the diagram in the laws or in art. And thank you all. Thank you, Luis and José. Um, any question, any contribution, any doubt? Thank you so much. Beautiful presentation. Uh, two sort of provocations also. Uh, I noticed that both talks, both yours and the last one, uh, focused on space and left time untouched or unmentioned so much. And why? And the second provocation is a quote by John Cage, who loved Immanuel Kant. And his favorite quote of Kant was, there are two things in this world which don't have to mean anything. One is laughter, and the other is music. How can we interpret uh, sound, sound art and music if it doesn't have to mean anything from the concept of schema or diagram, whatever? I start. Uh, okay, the, the, uh, that quote is very beautiful, and uh, Kant uh, will agree with himself now. So that's uh, only one reason, because uh, schema, when you make sounds or a, a composition of sounds in a order to an intention to be listening, to, to have a, a pitch, and a, uh, just a, the, the definition I, uh, I told you, is because for Kant there is no such a thing as an object for music. There cannot be such a thing as an object of music. Uh, uh, as, I, as I told for, uh, Kant, I'm, I'm sure that he will say that there is no such uh, a thing in itself that calls music. Music is always phenomenon. The, uh, there, is, there is no reference to any possible image to it. You cannot represent. In a sense that representation is a build, it's a token of something. So it doesn't mean, uh, uh, it doesn't need to be meaningful in the semantic terms because it's uh, pleasant as such. There is no no need to okay if you even if you want to classify art there is something arts can refer to uh, a concept or whatsoever in music there is no such a thing it's pure uh, amusement or pure, uh, pure uh, sentiment gefühl uh, that no needs no reference there is no such a thing as a logic concept for for music. And, for, and, and uh, of course, if you read this, uh, the pages on schematismus, uh, everything lies on time. Everything lies on time. So uh, all the categories he's analyzing, contingency, causality, necessity, uh, communality, is always uh, set upon time. So, but uh, the only reason is set it uh, upon time because uh, it is a process that goes through uh, towards an end. Uh, so, but uh, for that to be, you you need to have a, a stance or a mechanism to make it uh, special. So to say, that's what schematism was made. So even if yeah. it's hidden in the the most deepest uh, part of the uh, mankind soul. Yeah, the, the time is it's, it's not an ontological problem for sound and for music. And the space, yeah, I, I have, we have a problem with sound because, uh, because uh, um, the qualities, the invisibility, the, the finish of the sound, the time it's uh, I have a relationship with, uh, with sound, but uh, spatial. And we need to uh, uh, think why we conquest the space with sound and uh, why these objects, this technology, this device make some of the qualities of the properties of the, uh, of the acts of our mind in our body, in the, in the external of our body. I think it's the problem of sound is space, not time. Um, can you hear me? Yes. 
Yes, Boris. Ah. Are you are you still there? Okay. <laughs> Let me uh, a very small small uh, uh, remark uh, about that. It's a, it's um, you could say that space uh, that sound takes space before space has its occupation. What is that's a question? No, it's just a remark. Wow. I mean, Thank you. and it could be a question, but it is it's related to, of course, the process of, I mean, what we were just talking about. And I had to, it, it reminded me of, of, um, of, of a nice way of putting it that sound, in that sense, uh, the problem of sound is space, and it takes actually the space before the space itself necessarily has an occupation. And maybe I can add something trying to connect the two communications because it seems that the notion of a priori uh, in Boris communication, we can see it maybe in the, the true notion of environment or space, here in the notion of diagram, scheme, something pre-individual, something pre-media. Would you like to develop this notion of a priori um, and maybe um, make some bridges the a priori that is the Hitler post-humanism? Hmm. Hmm. Uh, okay. Uh, a priori only means for Kant. Uh, that is something uh, or... But a priori and a posteriori is beyond human. Right? Beyond human or beyond Kant? No, <laughs> beyond human. Is, 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 is transcendental, the a priori conditions, and if we see the devices as post-human in the terms of uh, beyond semantics, representation, everything, um, we can see maybe some connection between two, the two notions, no? Okay, it's a provocation. No, 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 <laughs> I like provocations, but uh, the problem is that if uh, I can get out uh, of the box and go to another, but, but let's, let, let's uh, stay in, in Kant. For Kant, a priori means that uh, there is something happening uh, for which there, there is no sensible uh, uh, um, experience. experience. Right. So, or no sensible object uh, for it. So, uh, uh, a priori is something that is imminent. It's a, a mechanism. I, if you see, like, uh, in Kant's pure reason, uh, all he's dealing with is how uh, we have, a, like, a kind of mechanisms that make us uh, see phenomenon, uh, because we, we never have access to I the phenomenon. So uh, the problem is that uh, 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 trying to, to connect a posteriori with uh, a priori uh, in Kant's terms, it's always re it, it, it always means that y you need to have a schema. Mm -hmm. There is no, okay, C Kant wrote to some, some friends saying that this is a very hard, uh, the, the most difficult pages he has ever written and uh, they are very dry, uh, rude, because it's very difficult to understand. But what, what Kant is saying is that there is a, uh, such a thing uh, that we cannot see, but s uh, somehow we can uh, uh, make uh, an image schema or, uh, of it by uh, relation all uh, the image to the relation between concepts and, and perception. Like the, the example in Kant was the dog. Or that there will never be uh, a perfect image when he talk about the dog, saying I can have an image of the dog, uh, but the dog could be a cocker or could be a German shepherd. But for instance, once he talk about uh, triangles, he said there will never be a, 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 an acute, an acute uh, image for that, mm -hmm. because it's a geometrical uh, figure. Uh, uh, as for sound, uh, the, the, uh, the rules of uh, connecting uh, sounds, uh, repercussion in space uh, uh, through time, means that is a, a technique that lies on what he, call, he will call genius. 
but for art, at least for him, he's thinking about all this. Uh, as as far as I, I understood the, the two critics, is only talking about visual arts. That's something that can have a, a token, something that can have an image. Uh, this is, for instance, how uh, Liot art uh, had interpreted Kant and go beyond on the notion of the invisible. Uh, but I think that uh, uh, João was right saying that uh, for Kant, uh, uh, there is no there is no such a need of semantics or uh, uh, reference uh, to music to be pleasure to be to to, to be uh, enjoyed as a phenomenon. Um, I'm recording a, a, a message in the Mil, in Mil Plateau, the Deleuze, and uh, they said, Felix Rattery and Deleuze said, uh, with, the, with the invention of the synthesizers, we don't need the a priori, the synth a priori of Kant. Um, and this is uh, the second quote of, of uh, gesture of uh, Flusser said something uh, that uh, Beethoven and Bach, and they acted uh, cybernetically without machine, without device. They manipulate the input output of the black box body. And why, uh, why the, the part of the body, part of the mind, part of the imagination are transferred to the space, to, uh, to, the, uh, to uh, the materiality of space, and uh, now the a priori, uh, just, uh, or just uh, as um, as Deleuze said, uh, we don't need the a priori, the sense a priori of Kant, because we have machine and device for that. I think I think is. Yes, uh, 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 let me. You know that. Uh, or, uh, or, uh, uh, I think that it's more easy to find examples in literature than in, uh, and there is a, a, a very, very, very short story, uh, which is in Evaristo Carriego, the, from Jorge Luis Borges, that calls uh, the dagger, el puñal. Mm. And uh, it doesn't matter what, uh, but the last sentence uh, says something like this, and uh, this is the, I think that it's precisely uh, what we are trying to show that when we invent a mechanism, when we specialize whatever, uh, uh, this specialization means that we, we will have a, 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 a reflection of what we have made. So the, this, uh, and the, the quote is very simple, from, uh, it's very beautiful. He says, uh, this is not what the dagger wants. It doesn't matter what he's talking uh, before. It is more than a structure of metal. Man conceive it uh, and shape it with a single end in mind. It is, in some, uh, in some way, eternal. The dagger, the last, uh, that, uh, that last night knifed a man in Tucambaro, uh, and the dagger that reigned it uh, is the dagger that reigned it uh, on Caesar. The dagger wants to kill. It wants to shed blood. So uh, this is the, 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 the same idea, uh, I think, that Kant will, will now, if he lives in the, this world of apparatus, is that the, 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 there is something that was uh, a primal source that uh, a dagger uh, dreams about blood. It could serve for cut wood, but it dreams about blood. So there is this uh, notion of, uh, this is a very schematic idea of when we think about the dagger, if you set on Borges' uh, brains, of course, on Borges' imaginary. A last question before lunch. Insults. <laughs> we can accept that as well. Hi. Um, just wanted to go back to there was a slide. Um, it said a mediating representation must be intellectual on one side. Um, and sensitive for the other. And sensitive. I was trying to work that out for starters, but since I've got everyone's attention. Um, yeah, what is it? Um, how, what does that mean to you if um, 
aesthetics is this balance of order or complexity, or you have your own definition. Um, what is, yeah, what is a meaningful representation if complexity, do, do you see that as a, uh, sorry, um, does that sabotage its understandability from someone else? I didn't understand the notion of sabotage. Um, maybe sabotage or compromise. Um, does, does complexity compromise the understandability for you? Okay, I will give you, uh, now that I'm Kantian, uh, because I spend all the week uh, <laughs> reading Kant, so I, uh, I will take the example of uh, Louise from the, uh, the unknown masterpiece, Chef de Franconou de, de Balzac. You know the story. No, the, the story is simple. It's Frenhofer who was, uh, has a lot of uh, disciples was painting his masterpiece. And uh, after years and years and years and years, uh, th that's the Picasso's uh, interpretation of the uh, Louis show to, to you. Uh, then here, uh, after years and years and years trying to paint in his f most perfect uh, painting, when he unveiled the, the canvas, the canvas was empty. There is only two feet there. So there is only two feet there. So uh, for Frankhofer, uh, uh, everything else was not needed. They are already there. From the feet, you can rebuild everything. So uh, I think that's a, a, a good image for the, uh, of what we're talking. That uh, if you draw the, the, the basis from, from where the things could be built, so there is no, of course, the, the disciples were looking like this. He went crazy. But uh, the last effort of Frankhofer was to, they, they only paint the feet. So uh, you only need to rebuild the rest. That's the masterpiece, the unknown masterpiece. I don't know if I, if I answer your, your question in a sense, that's what is a, yeah. a schema, that's what is the, the function of the subject when it puts looking through or listening, looking to a, a work of art or listening to music. Yeah, but in, in the case of listening to music, I completely agree with, uh, with Jonas. There is no need of reference. Thank you, that, that was the perfect answer, actually. I'm not going to you the lunch. Huh? <laughs> you are invited. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So. Thank you. All. Okay. Thank you, everyone. I think it, it was a, a very beautiful um, session. Um, and thank Boris, of course. Uh, Boris, thank you very much. Um, thank you, Jose and um, and Luis Claudio. So. We will lunch and we come back at, uh, at half, past two. half past two, right, Boris? Uh, we we hope to that you can can come lunch with us in the next <laughs> time, okay? That would be wonderful, uh, but for now, bon appetit, and I will do the same over here. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, Boris. Have a good thank lunch. You, Boris. Bon appetit. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs>